Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna make some fun cards. It would be great for birthdays or Halloween or get well, any occasion where you might wanna send a card to a child. Uh, these are really fun and I think you're gonna have a good time making them because we're gonna go through a bunch of techniques that are easy and uh, might get you using some stuff you've had in your stash for a while. We're gonna use some adorable new stamps from Petzl Craft and I'm gonna show you these. I absolutely adore their stamps. I find them to be so useful. And if you enjoy coloring with a variety of mediums, they're really great because there's always room for coloring. This one is called Les Pablo Series 1 and um, these stamps are from our sponsor TopFlightStamps.com so if you're not in France you'll be able to find these easily in the United States from Top Flight Stamps. I will put links in the video description as well as a coupon code so you can save 10% off which is always good to save a little money and I also wanted to show you this new set um, because I know a lot of times when you order you want to get everything at once and save shipping and whatnot. Um, all orders over 50 do ship free so it's nice to combine, but I thought this was really cute as well if you like their animal sets, which I really do. The cats are just, they crack me up every time I use them. I like, I'm giggling the entire time. So uh, so those are really fun and versatile sets. So the first thing that I did was I went ahead and I stamped um, a couple images with, um, with archival ink, but you know what? I needed to re-ink my ink pad and I didn't realize it at first, so my impressions were not perfect but that's okay. So one thing that happened here was I was stamping and I got smudges on the outside when I was cutting them apart. I'm going to show you how to deal with that. In here, I didn't I, I uh, didn't push hard enough and I got a little spot where it didn't stamp and I'll show you how to fix that too. The coloring medium I'm going to use today are watercolor pencils or water soluble oil pastels. Either will be fine. You can actually even use watercolor pencils if you prefer, but um, watercolor crayons will just give you more color at once, so it just makes the process a little bit quicker. We're going to use a clear water-based blending pen, which is great for smoothing everything around. This one's by Stampin' Up, so you have to get that from a Stampin' Up demonstrator, but you can also get the Tombow one on Amazon, which works just as well. And I also have a black water-based marker, and I'm going to show you how how I can fix my little issue right there. So I'm just gonna grab something that I can scribble my marker on. I've got this little lid here, my googly eye package lid, and I'm gonna scribble a little bit of black. Now if I was to color right on that with the black, it'd be too dark, because you see how my ink pad needed re-inking? My blacks are not super black, so I don't want that to happen. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that ink with the tip of my blending marker, and I'm just gonna kinda dab it in. And I can work in layers until I've got that filled in so it's about the same as the rest of my stamping. Okay, look at that. Now it does not look like, and it's a little wet so it's going to dry a little bit lighter, but it doesn't look like I made a mistake when I was stamping. So that's your stamping fix number one. Now when you're done with this, it, whether you're using um, your blending markers or whatever, you want to scribble it out on a scrap of paper until the tip goes clean. Your tip is going to stain. Don't worry about a stain on your blending marker. As soon as the ink runs clear, you are fine. You can cap it up and it's going to be perfect when you're ready to go use this again. Another tip to share is that when this goes dry, you can um, get a little cup and put some water, like a 50-50 mixture of water and vegetable glycerin in it. And then what I do is I just set it, set the tip down in the cup overnight, and it's gonna wick up as much moisture as it needs to re-ink your, um, your pen. You could even keep that in a, if you have a film canister, if you remember those, or if you have a baby food jar or something like that, you can keep your pens, you can keep that solution so anytime you need to refill your pen, you'll have it. It's a wonderful, uh, time-saving and money-saving thing because you don't have to run to the store or wait for an order to come in. Okay, so messy background. Let's deal with that problem next. So the first thing I like to do when I'm working on an image and I'm not going to cut out, I, I just have this trimmed to the square size that I'm going to use, is um, I like to color my image first. And you could use whatever colors that you want. And when I'm doing watercolor crayons, the great thing about these is I just need to scribble on some color. And I just have to make sure I don't go outside to the perimeter of what I want to color. And I'm going to be fine. Um, I'm going to use some bright colors because I think this would be fun for a birthday or a Halloween card. So if I'm doing like a detail like this, I'll just try to get in the middle of it because I can spread all of this out later. What I, another thing I like to do is look at the pattern paper I plan on using and try to match that. I have some leftovers from my envelopes here and I also have a couple, um, a couple prints that I'm going to use. 
I feel like when I'm making kids cards, the more color, the more pattern, the better. It's cheerful and bright and you should have a lot of fun with it. And um, don't worry about being perfect. That's why I don't want you to see a smudge in the background and be like, oh, I gotta throw it away. I gotta start from scratch. You don't. Now, since this pattern had a little bit of orange and yellow in it, I think I'm gonna use orange um, to go around the edges of some of these bigger shapes so I can do a little bit of dimension and shading and that's something you can do. The purple isn't anywhere in my patterns, but that's all right. As long as I have enough other colors to kind of help it um, help it blend in, it's going to be fine. I really like the turquoise the aqua color in this paper, so I wanna make sure I get some of that in there as well. Now, this is just a set of 24 colors. I It's so fun to get those humongous sets of colors, but oftentimes you really don't need them. So get whatever fits within your budget, especially when it's a water-based medium because it blends and you can layer and mix with water soluble mediums if you're working with like alcohol markers which um, you know they're not water soluble they're alcohol soluble they don't blend quite as much or you're working with like a dry normal colored pencil you probably would want to have more colors just because you're not gonna be able to just you know scribble them on a lid and mix them up and go from that you're you're, you're a little bit more um, a little bit more limited and I think I also get some green in there just because uh, it's fun to kind of have a little bit of that apple green and I'm actually going to color in the spokes there just so I have a spot I can get a little more color in. Now what I'm going to do is use my blending pen. And what I often try to do is go with my light areas first. So this spot here, this just the plain yellow first. Then I'll go here where I've got yellow and orange. So it doesn't matter how neatly I color as long as I stay inside the design because I can push everything around with my blending pen. Now, something that's really fun on kids' cards is to use googly eyes. So I don't think I'm going to color anything on the eyes because I know I can um, I can put on some googly eyes after and that would just give it a really fun effect. Now, at this point, I've kind of gotten into some green, so I think I'll go right to the green and then the turquoise and I'll come back and do that pure orange later. I could have gone right to the orange at that point um, before I did that little bit of green in the inside of the spokes there. Uh, you just want to make sure you don't contaminate. If you have to make a big jump in colors and you just want to scribble off on your uh, scrap of paper, otherwise you can just wait to the end and, and scribble that then. I love the turquoise. By adding the water, it really gives you all of the, all of the real co beautiful color. See, and you can bring, move color around. Like I wouldn't bother trying to color that brim, but I can totally just pick up some color and I could bring it around, like I could give the mustache a little color that way. So that's kind of a lot of fun. And we'll get our wheel here, our unicycle robot, and I could take a little of that color in there. All right, so now I gotta make kind of a big jump. I either have to jump to purple or to orange. So I'm gonna grab my scrap and I'm gonna scribble out my, my marker there till it runs clear or pretty close. And then I'm gonna go in and do my purple. So you can see how things could get a little dried out, how the marker could get a little dried out with all the scribbling. So that's why I think it's really important to know how to reduce it because your tip could be just fine, not worn at all, uh, but it's gone dry. Or maybe you were coloring with your children and they left the cap off, or hey, maybe you left the cap off. Cap off, it happens to all of us, right? So it's nice to, to know how to get a little more use. Now I think I'll ombre this down a little bit because I got a little sloppy with my coloring. So I'm just gonna bring some of this turquoise down and let it blend in with my purple. I think that looks kind of cool. Now I'll scribble off again. I'm going to get my orange legs there. So when in doubt, scribble it out, I guess would be my um, my advice. Pull up a little bit of that orange right in that spot there since I didn't have anything colored. Okay, so now we get to the how do we clean up our mistake on the outside. So um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look at this paper. This paper is mostly teal. Um, so that kind of bluish green, the opposite of this bluish green would be kind of like an orangish red. So that's what I'm going to use in my background. I'll take the, I'll start with this color here and I'm just going to lift it off, off my surface so I don't color on my table or on my stamping mat. And I'm just going to give a little bit of color around the edge. Now, if you didn't make, I still think this is pretty to do, even if you didn't make a mistake um, and smudge your ink, uh, but because I did, I'm gonna be bringing in my color a little bit further. So I'm just gonna go in here and, and bring it in a little bit. And then I'm gonna choose a darker color, uh, a nice like red to go on the edge. And I just wanna get a nice, um, a nice bright red here. I think this will look pretty good with that paper and just get that right on the edge. So these colors will blend together and be really pretty and really help this pop off of that aqua pattern paper that we used and also cover up our little ink smudge. 
Now, the paper that I'm using here, you can really use any smooth cardstock, but since we are adding water, you do want to try to find one that's good for water. I had a scrap of Bristol next to my cutting board, and that's what I had used today. So I know that everything's going to glide really well. So if you have an issue with things not uh, blending or gliding very well, it could just be that the paper that you're using might be, maybe you're using your marker paper that's better for like alcohol markers and not the paper that's better for um, water-based products. So just kind of keep that in mind. So I'm kind of starting at the edge and then I just kind of pull it in. I'm using little circular strokes and I just kind of like to color it in until I run out of media and it should run out before I get to the center so that's giving the uh, the character there a nice highlight. You can even add a little shadow under him if you want to. You could do the shadow right in that right with that red or orange even you know just deepen it deepen that color a little bit there. And coloring does not have to take a long time, especially if you know what mediums are going to give you a quicker result. And plus, you just get so much color with like a watercolor crayon or a watercolor water soluble oil pastel that you know it's just it just really makes the job really easy. Now you could um, you could also ink the background with like your ink pads, but you would have a little trouble if you're trying to get in close. Like if you had smudges close to the uh, the character there, that would be a little problematic. And I'm going to scribble until my all sides of my nib come clean and then I can cap it off and it'll be good for next time I need to use it. Um, I did have another little guy here. Now that that's dry, you can see, you really can't see where um, I'm. my ink skipped, right? I think that's a fantastic, um, fantastic thing to try, something you can always go for if you make a mistake. And the reason I used a memento marker, and honestly I really think you could use whatever water-based marker you had, but I know mementos, um, they tend to be really good about not lifting. So they don't blend very well with water, but once you put them down, you can almost watercolor on them. Um, it's very much like the ink that's in a memento, um, a memento marker. So it's, uh, it's really great for this type of project. So you can also go color by color. If you don't want to color it all and then blend it all out at once, you could always do one color first, see what you think, and then add another color. Because sometimes your colors a lot, they're a lot more robust once you add your blending marker. So you might not realize how dark something is. So you might want to change something else that you're doing. I think that'd be really pretty with some orange. And I think I'll do a light orange in the middle of the belly. And then maybe I'll go for that red. I always try to reuse my colors whenever I can, um, especially if I'm working in a set, just because it makes everything coordinate really well. And I've already got the paper picked and and uh, pulled out, so it just saves me a little bit of saves me a little bit of work. And the glycerin that's in the blending pen is what makes it blend really well and glide across the cardstock instead of it feeling like it's going to tear up or pull, pill the paper. So um, that's why you don't want to just put water in them. You want to have that, that glycerin. And I think I'll do a glaze of purple over the, um, the cape. And that will also help disguise if I didn't get an exact match with my uh, marker. And then I'm thinking I might just take whatever purple I have left on my on my uh, pen and just do the eyes with that. There we go. <laughs> He's kind of cute. All right, and I think for a border for him, I'll do turquoise and I'll just do a very faint border because I didn't make a mistake on the background. So I can just do a, a like a swipe of color around each edge. Try to keep it right on the edge as much as possible. Be careful though, you will probably get it on your fingertips, so you just want to be aware of that. Probably wash your hands before you go to assemble the card. All right, and blend it right in. I love quick coloring really great for kids cards especially when my kids were little and I didn't have as much time to craft as I do now and I always love to make the handmade cards for birthday parties but sometimes it was like literally making that card uh five minutes before we were ready to, to leave um so you know those those tips really helped and then you get a really soft little border so I know this is going to go on some red paper so I know if I had that nice blue there, that's really going to pop against that red. So, you know, kind of look at your papers whenever you're coloring. If you can pick your papers first, it's going to save you a lot of time and frustration because it's always easier to match your um, the, the stamped image that you're coloring to the pattern paper than it is to color the image and then try to find pattern 
sufficient paper to match. You might not even own any and it might require another trip to the store. And we want to use what we have. We don't want to have to go and buy new stuff every day. We want to make the stuff that we have way more useful. The next thing we're going to do is this really fun industrial background. Now I took an embossing folder and this was a recent splurge. I really enjoyed the look of these really thick uh, texture embossing folders. This is a Tim Holtz. Um, I don't remember. It's one of his thick ones. I think it's called Foundry, but I'm not 100% sure. But most of your big box craft stores will have this and the other three that it came out with. But I got this one because I knew it would be really great for steampunk and kids cards. Um, you could emboss a metallic piece of paper and get a cool shiny industrial look, but I really prefer to use black cardstock and color it how I want. And I'm going to be using metallic oil pastels and this is a metallic water soluble oil pastel you can also use um like if you have those rub-ons those metallic waxy rub-ons that will work well and actually i'm going to try not to put any more in the middle because the thing about these oil pastels or any of your waxy rub-ons is that they're um they're very greasy and they could keep things from sticking so it could have you could have a hard time i will show you some ways to get around that um, when you are gluing on top of these panels because they're so fun to make and if you don't have this look in your stash do you have a, one with gears on it do you have one that has any sort of like maybe a star pattern any sort of pattern that would look good in metal like any sort of um pattern that might look like a tin pressed tin ceiling anything like that any sort of like mosaic will work perfect you don't have to have this so after i've gotten a few colors I use my finger tool and I just rub it in and see what I've got. Um, sometimes I'll have enough at this stage, but oftentimes I feel like I need a little bit more uh, to make it kind of a little more convincing. And your fingers are going to get really messy here, so be, you know, be prepared to go wash your hands. If you use baby wipes, you can use a baby wipe. Um, I haven't had baby wipes in my studio forever, so, well, in, in about two years. So I've just, I just run upstairs and wash my hands. You can have as much color or not as you prefer. I like to get colors in there and then kind of go in with some golds and silvers and then kind of mute them out. But any of those colors that you used to um, in your pattern paper or that you used um, to color with are great to add in. You might not even notice them so much, but just the fact that you have them in there is going to help everything uh, really work, work well together. You may choose, choose to blend it a lot, or you may choose to let some of the, um, the parts show up a little bit more. Something I like to do sometimes is take a lighter color and just kind of graze the edges so that you get that, um, that a little bit sharper of a metallic look. And I might blend it in if it's on a flat area. Especially you can catch a little nail heads there there. I think that looks pretty good. Now this is going to be very greasy and because we use so much and it's on smooth cardstock, it will smear onto somebody's hands. So what I use is my Aquanet. <laughs> Not only is it great for keeping your hair in place in gale force winds, but it will also work as a wonderful fixative for your artwork and it's really cheap. And of course I use this on cards, not on paintings because I don't know, it might yellow over time, but it certainly works well for a card that might be kept at a, for a month or two at most. And you can see this is my studio one. Oh my gosh, it smells like my youth. It smells like high school. I love it. Absolutely love it. So you want to set this aside to dry and after it's dry, it's going to look like this. So now I'm going to wash my hands and I'm going to show you how to put these cards together. I'll be right back. Okay, I think I'm going to put this card together on camera, then I'll do the other one off camera and show you everything at the end. Um, I am going to take the dried panel that I had sitting aside, and I'm going to adhere that to my card base. So I do want to be careful when I'm, even though I sealed this, I still want to be careful that I don't um, smudge my ink anywhere. So I am going to put a good amount of adhesive on the back. If this was super bumpy or you felt like your adhesive wasn't strong enough, you could use a hot glue to stick this down to your card base. And I'm just going to center that up because I have a white card base. I really want to make sure I don't smudge anything. Then I take a brayer and I'll just roll over it. I find that that helps a little bit because um, it just gives me even pressure and then I'm not like tempted to rub my hands all over. Although, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty well locked down. Now, you know how I like my moldy oldie tools and one tool that I use all the time are my decorative edge scissors. And I thought something that was a little bit kind of, um, you know, angular would really look good with this. So I'm just going to take these pinking edge shears and cut that off. 
Oh, I kind of like how that, how that, I think I'm going to start at the top of the card and that kind of will help the fact that I didn't exactly, this is not perfectly lined up. So I think that'll help. Like my, my mat ended up being a little short, but I didn't want to go yanking it off because then I, then I'd curl everything and it wouldn't look as good like pulling it off and, and lining it up perfectly than if I just left it the way it was and put something on to offset it. And that's what I'm going to do here. I really like the way that looks. And um, I have some robot washi tape, which I thought would look really, really cute. So I'm just going to see. I really like this. Um, I really like the gears here. I might need a little more contrast um, with this blue. So let's use these two. I think they'll be really cute. And I picked these up at, uh, I think I got these at Joann's. Or AC more. I actually think this one came from AC more. And um, what I like to do, because washi tape is not super sticky, I will uh, wrap it around to the back, and then when I glue this down, I'll make sure that I get some adhesive over the washi tape so it doesn't peel up. But usually, just wrapping it around helps quite a bit. This paper has a little varnish on it too, so um, that sometimes can prevent things from wanting to stick, especially washi tape really well. I love those gears and I love that uh, kind of apple green color. So pretty. Yeah, I'm going to layer it a little bit and I like it because with washi tape it's translucent. You always see a little bit of the design from the back so it helps things match and coordinate really well. And we got that there. I like that. Oh, and I actually have some brads that are robots that I got at the stamp show. So I think I'm going to I think I'm going to use that. I think I'm going to poke it on this so that it'll have something to stand out. I, pr I already had this one punched from something else, so I'm just going to use it. But I might I might have gone with a smaller one if I had uh, if I had punched it specially for this project. And I actually like to glue them on a little bit better than poking them through. That way I can I can make sure I have it lined up really well. Now this I can use regular adhesive on. Um, sometimes if I've got something. Well, I think when I glue onto that, I'm going to use hot glue just because that will be, that'll be a little bit tough to stick to. But since this is just going on to cardstock, I think it's going to be fine. And I'll use hot glue for this. I thought my hot glue gun had died the other day, but turns out it just wasn't plugged in all the way. I was like, oh my gosh, I've had this forever. Well, I guess it's, I guess it's time for a new one. But then I looked at the cable and I'm like, oh, it's not even plugged in right. Well, there we go. Oh, I like that. Oh, something else I think I want to add. I really like these brads. They look like um, little screw tops and you can get them. They, um, they came out probably about 10 years ago, maybe even longer. I remember buying them for scrapbooking and then you couldn't find them anywhere. And then um, I saw Tim Holtz came out with some. So uh, if you can't find them, try, you know, try searching plus and minus brads. I've heard them called that. I've heard them called screw top brads. I think I got a really inexpensive pack once at Oriental Trading. There, I like that. And it kind of balances out the metal. Oh, I think I'll put one there too. That will look good, I think. I think Oriental Trading might have been where I got my last batch and they were called plus and minus breads. You see the Phillips one looks kind of like a minus. Maybe they couldn't call them screw chop breads for some sort of <laughs> copyright. I don't know. I wouldn't think that, the, that that would be something that would be copywritten. And I can kind of shift it around, see exactly where I want it. I think I like it slightly off-centered. I could put a couple. Oh, maybe I will put a couple of the brads. Um, I am going to use the hot glue. And like I said, I'm going to go over where the tape is just in case it doesn't want to stick very well for me. It'll give me an extra little bit of oomph. Oh, that's cute. I also have these little pins, these little buttons I picked up at the uh, the Dollar Tree at Valentine's Day last year. I thought they were so cute and I did use them on this card. I might use one on the other one with the little monster because I don't have any, you know, really good embe embellishments for the little monster guys. Uh, so I think that's pretty cute. I think maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll do one there and one there of the plus and minus brands. The only thing about this is though, I will it'll have to punch through the whole card because we don't want to pull off the, um, we don't want to pull off that panel just to stick a brad in because you're just going to end up curling it and it's not going to look any better. I think I'll put a minus one, put a plus one down here and a minus one up there so I balance out that design. Oh, did you know there was so much thought that went into placing brads on a project? Um, not as I used to hoard these pretty bad because I was afraid I wouldn't be able to find any more. But now I think since Tim Holtz has gotten in the game, 
uh, people will know about these beauties and I'll be able to find them. Oh, I just think that's adorable! Isn't that cute? All right, I'm gonna finish up the other card and then we'll come back and look at all the, all, the, all four of them uh, in just a second. Okay, guys, you know what? I just realized this has been like staring at me, sitting in front of me the entire time. I die cut a bunch of gears to use on these robot cards and they were sitting like literally six inches away from me. They would have bit me if they were a bear and I completely forgot about them. And now I'm thinking they're really cute and I want to use them, but I can't slide under there to layer it because I've already glued anything, everything down. So what you do in this situation is you simply just cut it and then you can kind of sneak it under the edge somewhere. I think that is really cute and I'm putting that in there. It would have been really cute also to put one of those brads in there, but I think I probably used my quota of brads on this card, so anything more would probably be a little bit gratuitous. We don't want to be gratuitous brad users. There, and that'll just give us an extra little sparkle there. Oh, that's cute. And then um, I was really feeling that this needed something else, so what, per how perfect is that? I got glue strings, glue hot glue strings everywhere. I think I'm gonna have to sneak, sneak that in there. Let's see, maybe I'll do it that way. So if you had, that's another thing, look at your dies. Do you have anything that will go with a card that you're creating? A lot of times, um, a lot of times you can make your own embellishments. It will work more perfectly than anything you could buy because you can pick the color, you can ink it up, you can change it however you need to, to, to uh, reflect the theme of your project. Look at that, I can't believe I almost forgot that. These are fabulous. And I own the die, so it's bought and paid for. We're gonna put another one on there. We're gonna do some gratuitous die cut use here. Oh, I can't believe I almost forgot this. I've got so many hot glue strings here that are just like getting tangled. What you do if you have too many hot glue strings, here's another tip for you, write this down. You uh, hit it with a heat tool and it will, um, it'll melt those hot glue strings and they will disappear like magic. I don't have room for another one, but I think I have a little metal gear. That might be kind of cute. Let me go see what I have. See, you know, you just never, you never know. You're never really done planning a card. It can always evolve. Another tip I want to share with you is that I divide all my metal embellishments by like whether they're a warm color or a cool color. So all my silvers and pewters are in here. And then I've got another jar just like this or another drawer um, in my hardware tool organization thing that's all coppers and gold. So I instantly just grabbed my silver box and I found those and they're the exact same finish as those plus and minus brads, screw top brads there. So um, so it was really only, it really only took me like five seconds to grab those and bring them back over here. So there's another tip. If you're well organized, you will find that you use your stuff a lot more and less of it goes to waste. Now, I think that card looks fantastic. It looks so much better with just the addition of those couple die cuts. And oh, I would have been so mad if I finished these cards and I then I found this <laughs> this stack of die cuts. That would have been so upsetting. All right, so I'm going to finish up the card with this guy and I'll be right back. It's going to be the same process, so you don't need to see it. Seriously? I forgot to put Google eyes on this guy. That was like the whole reason we didn't color his eyeballs. Good grief. I need a cup of tea or something. <laughs> this is crazy. I'm like, there we go. I want him to be slightly mismatched so he looks a little scary. Maybe purple, maybe one purple eye. That might do the trick. Uh, I don't know if I like that. Actually, I don't know if I like googly eyes at all. Well, let me just put him on there. You can take a look and you can decide for yourself, you know? Actually, I think I like them without the Googles. So sometimes, sometimes you have some restraint and you end up not putting the googly eyes on and you end up just going with the die cuts and calling it good. So that was nice. I'm glad I didn't glue that down until I looked at it. But this time for reals, we're gonna come back when all the cards are done, seriously. And here these adorable Halloween cards are. I don't know what I like most, the robots or the little monster guys. I think they're both pretty darn cute. Um, and I also like that you can, even though we're using different stamp sets, you can still use a lot of the themes over again. Um, like these little buttons from the Dollar Tree and, and uh, the washi tape worked really well with this and the googly eyes. Those are very inexpensive embellishments that you can kind of have on hand and use a lot of different sets. Something fun and whimsical like that on a kid's card is just just, um, it's just ideal because it just brings a little bit of humor and you know that's interactive element kids are gonna love and then being able to just keep kind of using the silver embellishments here and my little die cuts um, 
in those brads that I picked up from uh, the stamp show. I think it was Eyelet Outlet. Those were really fun for this. And you know, they're not heavily embellished. You still might want to add an extra stamp if you're mailing these through the mail. Sometimes what I'll do, um, if I have some really bumpy stuff, I'll add an extra stamp and I'll also put um, like a, I'll cut a piece of cardstock to be the same size of this card and I'll put it on top. And that's just going to help it go through the uh, mail sorting machines a little bit easier. Of course, if you're handing them out in, hand, uh, in person, it doesn't matter a bit. Now the way I did the envelopes, I've, I've explained the method of the envelopes like a million times. Um, but I used paper, like if I can find lightweight, uh, light colored paper, I love to use the pattern on the outside. That's what I did here with this. Um, of these darker red papers, I use the pattern on the inside because otherwise I wouldn't be able to write on that, um, on the red paper. And I could use a label, but sometimes you'd have to worry about labels catching in the machines when you mail them if they're not a really, you know, strong label. And I've had a lot of issues with like labels, maybe because I buy them and I don't use them up in a reasonable amount of time, but they get, um, they, they kind of peel off, they lose their stickiness, so that just kind of saves you from that. So hopefully you found this helpful. Hopefully it showed you how to fix some of your mistakes. You're not stamping a brand new image just because you got a little smudge in the background or just because your stamping ink wasn't solid all the way through. You know, don't sweat it. You can fix so many of these mistakes. Keep your supplies out of the trash can because that's wasteful and it just goes into a landfill. This way it can be reused, no one's going to know, and not only are you not throwing it away, but you're actually going to use it to brighten someone else's day. And that rhymes. On that note, I am going to bid you farewell. Please check out our sponsor at topflightstamps.com and find these adorable stamps that I use. They'll be linked in the video description. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Until next time, happy crafting!